I'm Daniel Gregoire. I'm the CEO, founder of Halon Entertainment here in Santa Monica, California. My name is Clint Regan. I'm a previous supervisor with uh, Halon Entertainment, and I've been doing previous supervision and artist work for 13 years, uh, somewhere around that range. Previsualization and I go quite a ways back. My first previous gig was actually Moulin Rouge. I got to sit in Sydney, Australia with uh, director Baz Luhrmann and have him hum the music for the film over my shoulder as I animated the camera flying through the Mulan. As Moulin Rouge was a musical, Baz was completely hooked into the rhythms and the tones and the emotions of the music. So it was really important to move the camera uh, in a way that complemented the things that he wanted to, to convey in the film. I actually started out in 2D animation. I was uh, uh, flipping pages, doing pencil work, learning that art just as it died. Uh, I was at Disney Animation for a small time and found myself out of a career. So I retrained in 3D in Maya and then stumbled into Previs and have loved it ever since. It was one of the best projects I ever worked on, not just because of the sandwiches, because Ridley, uh, he, he was so into the art and he would sit down with us and he'd pull his tea out and we would all sit and sketch and, and then work at the editorial table. He'd hover over the shoulder with my artist working on the show. That was such a, a real pleasure working that way. Today is an amazing time to be alive because Previs really exists due to the fact that you can buy a PC for a thousand or two thousand bucks. You can get educational versions of all the high-end software that all the visual effects companies and Previs companies use. You can learn this stuff in your bedroom in high school whenever you want. It's really about the democratization of technology and the accessibility of it to learn and educate yourself about how to do these sorts of things without having to go to uh, expensive universities. It is always evolving, but your, your strongest way to get in is to make sure you're a really strong generalist with some great aesthetic uh, uh, choices in your reel. That means aesthetic animation that you can animate doesn't mean you're, you're doing Pixar level work, but it means that it's not awkward, it's not painful to look at. You know, I had to get to a point where the poses and the silhouettes and the storytelling of the animation was at least fluid enough that you laughed instead of, you know, you know scratched your eyes out because it was just too rough. Um, and we all, we've all, we're all at that rough phase at some point. So aesthetically, I learned a ton learning 2D animation. I think that's a huge um, benefit that a lot of people that just co-technical are um, missing, uh, frankly. In my teams, when I have artists, you can tell if they've studied art or just studied computers. So pre-visualization is a process by which we digitally create the film before a director goes out and films it. We work with producers, directors, production designers, art directors, stunt choreographers, visual effects supervisors, uh, the studios, everybody in the production process. And the work that we do is not actually the work that appears on the screen, but because we have the relationships with the top filmmakers, we're working with them to help them realize what their vision is digitally before it appears on the screen. So they can budget, plan, figure out what equipment they need on the day, and they can help themselves not only coalesce their vision, but also sell it to other people in the production chain. It also helps them avoid major mistakes, like some people have gigantic ideas for very expensive shots, and by the previous process, we can help them discover those things before they end up shooting what could become a million dollar shot. So even though it's not our final pixels, it's absolutely the heart and soul of, of the shots and the sequences that we've worked very diligently with the directors and the producers uh, to envision. The more the director is there with me and I'm able to just say, hey, do you like it moved here, moved there, then he gets his head in that space so that when he arrives on the day, it's not just, gee, this is what I have to work with. He's already been there in his head as if he was there virtually, which gives him a lot more confidence. It lets him make some decisions that says, you know what, I know I tried this in previs, and while it seemed okay when we actually did it in previs, the look was horrible, and it's not what I want. So it's a much more informed uh, way to work, and I think that helps directors a, a ton. So I've had the great fortune of working on some pretty notable projects, and starting with Moulin Rouge being my first introduction to previs, it couldn't have been a better experience. Uh, and then from there, moving on to Star Wars Episode Two, which, you know, if you ask any CG artist in this field, they will give you the answer that, you know, Star Wars was the reason they wanted to get into filmmaking in the first place. Star Wars Episode Three, just continuing on, uh, I had the opportunity to become visual effects supervisor on THX 1138 for several months, which was a passion project of George's to re-up uh, his original first film uh, for DVD release. Working with um, Mr. Spielberg, 
on War of the Worlds, as well as Indiana Jones 4, World War Z, John Carter with Andrew Stanton, which was a joy. Uh, we've worked on Planet of the Apes, Hercules. We worked on Life of Pi, which won for best visual effects as well as uh, best film. Very proud moment for us. Uh, we did 90 minutes of previs on that film. Everybody's got a different background and uh, comfort level with technology. I've worked with some directors who they just know they want entertaining stuff and they let us um, you know, work from our imagination, work from the boards and kind of evolve into something even cooler. Um, I've worked with other directors who want exactly what they've storyboarded and get exactly what they want. So it's a, been a big spectrum. The process today is evolving into virtual production where we actually end up on set using game engines or real-time engines to actually display the images live as the actors are acting, as the cameras are rolling. Uh, we're using game engines and virtual reality using Oculus headsets uh, to allow directors and producers to actually walk around their environments in stereo so they can actually get a sense for how big or small things are. Uh, we're using virtual cameras that are motion captured cameras so you can actually hold this instrument in front of you and have a window into the virtual world so you can actually shoot your film before you go and shoot your film. So these are all the sort of tools that are starting to mature that make our process even more exciting than it was even five years ago. When I was working with uh, Steven Spielberg on War of the Worlds, War of the Worlds, most people I don't think know, had to go from dead stop script to in theaters in nine months. So Previs really played an amazingly integral part of the filmmaking process. There's a scene in the film when Tom Cruise jumps into a blue van and with his family has to escape this exploding bridge. This particular shot was not in the script and was simply a brainchild of Stevens the day before he was going to shoot it. We arrived on location at eight o'clock in the morning or so. Steven was walking around the location, which was a neighborhood in uh, Bayonne, uh, New Jersey, I believe, and um, was inspired. This gigantic bridge is behind this house that we were supposed to shoot at, and he sort of looked at it and spun around and motioned for me to come over, and motioned for Pablo Hellman, the visual effects supervisor, to come over and said, hey, Pablo, hey, can we blow up this bridge? And of course, Pablo said, well, of course we can, Steven. You know, we can do anything for you. <laughs> and so. He walked us through what he wanted the shot to be. He wanted Tom to jump in the van, he wanted the van to drive along the street, take a right-hand turn past the front of his house, and then he wanted to tilt up to see this bridge cascading as it exploded and destroyed and tipped forward onto the housing project that was in front of it. So I had already built the neighborhood on my laptop, but I had not built the bridge, I hadn't built some of the adjoining streets, so I quickly went and did a bunch of photography of the bridge, of the streets and the adjoining houses. And over the course of the night, even going back to my hotel, I completed this shot. The next morning when I came to set, I had my laptop flipped open. I had a version of the shot running on my laptop. I ran into set. They were already prepping the truck. They had the camera on the truck. All the rigging was there. The guys were waiting to shoot this shot. Literally first shot of the morning. Ran the laptop in. Steven looked at the previs looked at me, he said, that's exactly what I want, that's perfect, let's shoot it. We showed it to the rest of the crew. Everybody goes, okay, we know what we need to do. Tom got in the van, cameras rolled, they did two takes and got it. And that is the shot that's actually in the film and it's nearly identical to the previous that I had done on my laptop that evening that Steven had just conceptualized the prior morning. Probably when I got Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I was pretty, you know, my second project was X-Men, uh, the third X-Men movie. Uh, you know, and I grew up with comic books, so I was really excited. I've been excited every step of, every step of the way, and I, you know, it, it's still a job, you still work, but I, pretty, I feel pretty um, blessed that uh, I get to play and have fun every day. Um, and when I hear brothers-in-law or friends complain about their job, I, I just have to bite my tongue and make sure I don't complain because it's not fair. <laughs> For more great movie-related content, check out the videos below or go to cinefix.com.